I'm Professor Oliver Williams. I'm here to give a talk at the Leaders Angle program. And the title of the talk is The Changing Role of Business in Society. And what I focus on is that business used to be thought of as having a purpose simply to make money. And I think today we're moving uh, to a wider understanding of the role of business in society. The purpose of business is largely understood today to be creating sustainable value for stakeholders. Stakeholders including not just the shareholder, and of course that's a crucial stakeholder, but stakeholders include the employees, the suppliers, the communities, the physical environment, and all that it takes to run a good company today. I always say, is the glass half full or half empty? I think the glass is half full. You know, even though we have a lot of problems today, uh, the people living in dire poverty are much uh, lesser in number than they were 10, 20 years ago. Uh, and so uh, a, a lot of things are getting better. We still got a long ways to go. Uh, when you look at the changing role of business in society, I was thinking about it last night. 20 years ago when I was coming here to give lectures, uh, I had contact with one of the top officers of Coca-Cola for, for Africa. And uh, he was telling me that they uh, have these big trucks, lorries, I guess they call them, where they go in the most rural of areas to deliver their products. They had decided and continue to do to bring healthcare workers in the cab of the truck and medicines uh, for the people. Uh, this is some 20 years ago. <clears throat> And I said, you know, I teach ethics. I think that's wonderful that you're concerned about the welfare of those people. But how do you make the case uh, for your shareholders who are interested in good returns? Who want, what's the business case for bringing these healthcare workers and these medicines, particular for, uh, particular the antiretrovirals for HIV AIDS? Oh, he said, it's simple. If they're sick, they're not gonna buy Coca-Cola. Well, that, I mean, some of the companies were well ahead on thinking that the responsibility of business is much wider today as we've globalized the economy. I mean, if you're selling Coca-Cola in London or Paris, you don't have to worry about the health of your people because government takes that responsibility. Once we globalized the economy and business decided they needed new markets and they were going to go in uh, to uh, all parts of the world, then they said, look, for us to do business, we need stability. And often the governments are unwilling or unable to continue to form stability. And so we're going to take on some of the responsibilities to shape a stable society. And what business has is management skills. So it's a very interesting case study of how business took on a problem that they didn't solve, but they had the resources to help solve them, but the government did not. What business leaders are saying, well, they're saying the same kinds of things that Bill Gates said, but we might just look at a couple of them. Uh, this is the CEO of Novartis, a big pharmaceutical company based in Switzerland. The first responsibility of a CEO is to run the company successfully and generate products which are useful to your customers, resulting in economic value creation. We also have to act responsibly, respecting not only the law, but also fulfilling legitimate expectations that society has of us. Today, these expectations, in most instances, go beyond short-term profit maximization. What people want is that business people behave in a responsible way in communities in which they live, that they treat employees fairly, respect the environment, and demonstrate sensitivity to the problems of others, uh, other disadvantaged people in the world. Now, I think the key thing here, and he's summing up what most of the companies of the UN Global Compact uh, believe, uh, about what is the purpose of business. And that's the key issue that's changed, I think, dramatically in the 20 years that I've been teaching and researching. You know, in the United Nations Global Compact, we have 8,000 companies from 140 countries who are trying to advance human rights, particularly in developing countries. 
the consensus amongst those companies is the purpose of business is to create sustainable value for stakeholders. The purpose of business is to create sustainable value for stakeholders. Now, one of your stakeholders is the stockholder, and if you don't make money, you're not here tomorrow. So never let it be said that a professor told you you didn't have to make money. Uh, but there's other stakeholders. There are workers. There are suppliers. There's the physical environment. There's the communities where you have your operations. And creating sustainable value for each of those stakeholders means a little something different. Uh, and the context shapes what it means. And so I think that is a dramatic change. Now, not all businesses are there yet. Not all businesses are in a position to create value for all the stakeholders. I mean, if you're just about making it, uh, then you have to kind of hold the line. But many businesses are in a position to create sustainable value. And, it, and a good business case can be made to create sustainable value. It's not just like you're being the Red Cross or you're being some charity. For the long-term ability of your company to prosper, like my Coca-Cola story I opened up with, uh, it's probably a very good business decision to try to create sustainable value for the various stakeholders. Uh, this one I might take a look at because I think it gets to the heart of the matter. This is by an official in McKinsey and Company, the big consulting company. However, much of this debate re resolves around a misleading distinction between pursuing shareholder value and demonstrating corporate social responsibility. As this executive in McKinsey has observed, both views obscure the real relationship of business to so-called external issues, and it's time the debate was recast. The purpose of any business that seeks to be sustainable has to be more than generating short-term shareholder value. Simply by adding the word long-term to shareholder value, we embrace everything necessary for the survival and success of the company. This includes building trust among communities and maintaining a healthy environment in which to do business. Some of the conceptual foundations for this change of the role in business and society uh, is are listed here, things like corporate citizenship. People are saying, that just as you and I as citizens have personal responsibility for the health of our country, so do big organizations like businesses have some uh, corporate citizenship responsibility. Uh, another one, uh, I quote Jeffrey M. Altair, CEO of GE, uh, whose um, point is that the kind of young people they're trying to attract to their business, uh, and they only want the best and the brightest, uh, but these young people are often saying, hey, I want to make, help make the world a better place, not just make money for GE. Uh, and so he says the reason people come to work for GE is that they want to be about something that is bigger than themselves. People want to work hard, they want to get promoted, they want stock options, but they also want to work for a company that makes a difference. This is an interesting poll uh, and uh, paid for by the World Economic Forum. Uh, and they, <clears throat> they put out surveys every year. It's called the Millennium Poll on Corporate Social Responsibility. And actually, you can Google this and, and get the whole thing if you want. Um, and um, they interviewed 25,000 average citizens across 23 countries on six continents. And they reveal a growing number of one and expanding role for business and society. So one of the key drivers of this changing role business in society is that our consumers are asking business to do more. And uh, the good question is, well, why are they? And I think my own research would say the reason consumers are asking business to do more is that business seems to be able to get things done, and governments don't. In this survey, you had this particular question, what is the role of large companies in society? And you could answer the one on the left to make profit, pay taxes, create jobs, and obey all laws. And that's typically the position of Milton Friedman. You know, Milton Friedman who argued the only social responsibility of business is to make money uh, and then pay taxes. And the government takes on uh, these social uh, challenges. Uh, so, or you could an answer to the right-hand side, set higher ethical standards and help build a better society. 
or you could take something in the middle. And you can see the most affluent countries, like Australia, Canada, and US, Great Britain, uh, basically have a large percentage who want uh, something different. But I think if you look at uh, Germany, very similar to South Africa, because it's almost two countries, you know, East Germany and West Germany. In East Germany, they're still struggling to earn a, you know, have good quality of life. And West Germans uh, live better than you do or than I do for the most part, as far as affluence goes. And I, t I take it South Africa is somewhat similar uh, another survey that's paid for by the World Economic Forum, which is the thousand largest companies in the world, is called the Edelman Trust Barometer. <clears throat> and the gist of this is to measure trust levels. Uh, and uh, why would business be interested in trust levels? Because the lower the trust, the more government regulation you get. You can see that more and more of the countries are getting in the distrusters category. The problem is, uh, when you have a cynical, distrusting society, then you're getting probably over-regulated. And people think regulation is the answer. It probably isn't. If you look at uh, detailed studies, do, can you accomplish what you think with regulation? Often not. This just gives you an idea of how business is not meeting the public expectations uh, of business. And what they're comparing there is the uh, the light blue line tells you what consumers want business to do. For example, the top one is listen to customers' uh, needs and feedback. So 67% want business to do that, but consumers feel uh, only 36% that in fact business actually does that. And, and the whole list is simply showing that consumers have certain expectations, and by and large, they're not being met. But you know, if you look at the other professions, what's the purpose of a doctor? It's to heal patients. Now a doctor has to make money or he's not gonna be here tomorrow. But no one says that's the purpose of a doctor, to make money. Look at a lawyer, what's the purpose of a lawyer? Seek justice, at least that's what they teach in law school. I'm not sure that's happening. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so a lawyer has to make money. In fact, they make an awful lot of money. Uh, but that's not the purpose. You know, what's the purpose of a professor? We've got some wonderful professors here. They don't get paid nearly enough, but that's not their purpose, to make money. It's, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> So, let's, let's not worry about their money. Uh, but it's to educate minds and hearts. I mean, that's the purpose. Now, why did we ever decide the purpose of businessman or woman was to make money. That was a terrible mistake, led by some of our economists. And a lot of people believed it. Everything, when you get up in the morning, all I gotta do is make a buck, make money. No, you have gotta create sustainable value for stakeholders. Corporate social responsibility, what we call CSR, used to be simply philanthropy. In other words, when S.A.B. Miller gave to Stellenbosch University, that was corporate social responsibility. And that's all, that's basically all companies did, philanthropic uh, kinds of moves. And uh, far be it from me to say they shouldn't keep giving to Stellenbosch, uh, but that isn't CSR. CSR today, in this new understanding of the role of business and society, is to create sustainable value for all stakeholders. And so it's value creation. And so corporate social responsibility is taking care of your employers, making sure they have the good education, uh, so they, they have a certain amount of mobility, taking, certain, taking care of their security, taking care of your suppliers, taking care of the communities where you have your operations. Uh, that's corporate social responsibility. It's value creation. Yeah. Thank you.